Samsung Malaysia just dropped its Android 10 One UI 2.0 a few days ago for the Note 10 and Note 10 Plus series. This is a huge update in terms of size, requiring a total of close to 2GB of download for the entire update. Albeit the size of the software is huge, the overall changes to the software look and feel is minor at most. Samsung tweak the overall interface to give it a familiar yet modern touch. Today, I'm going to break down some of the updates that make the One UI 2 worth the update. Hello, my name is Sean and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, I do a lot of tech reviews as well as unboxing. And if that is something that interests you, do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a thumbs up on this video. I've recently also started a couple of new social media accounts and the links will be in the description down below and I really hope to see you guys there. And with that said, let's get on with a review of the new Samsung One UI 2.0 for Android 10. So once you've updated the firmware on your Note 10, head over to settings and you can scroll all the way down to about phone and here you can click on software information uh, and this is where you can see the software information of your phone. So here you can see that the Samsung firmware has been updated to One UI 2.0. Any Android version is now at Android 10. You can click on the Android 10 version a couple of times and the familiar Android screen will pop up and you can play around with it. You can drag all these things around and you know the typical Android software information screen. So this is the first time Google is ditching the dessert names with the last Android name to have the dessert based name to be Android 9.0 Pi which is the previous version of this software. So the latest version of Android will simply be called Android 10. So this is how you check the information of your Samsung device. So one of the major changes of One UI 2 is the camera layout. The overall design of the camera is now cleaner and Samsung aims to help its consumers focus on the photo instead of all the distracting stuff. So the very first thing you will notice is that the camera modes can be customized uh, to your most used camera mode. So here you can see that these are some of the modes that I have already configured in. Uh, but what comes standard will be photo, you will have live focus, video and live focused video. So all the other modes will be hidden under the section more and you can see once we go to the more section you can see some of the things that uh, pop up here. So you can click on edit here and you can drag and drop stuff into the tray uh, if you use them a lot and you can also drag some of the stuff out if let's say you don't want let's say I don't want live focus I can hold on to this and drag it back out. So that is a very uh, handy way to control all the camera modes that you have uh, inside your camera so that you only keep the stuff that you know you frequently use and you can leave the stuff that you don't use out from the camera mode tray. So that creates a simplicity in the overall design of the camera. So the overall look and feel of the camera app becomes more customized and cleaner and only features that are relevant to a specific camera mode is displayed. So you can see the stuff up here uh, will change accordingly based on the camera modes that I am in. So that creates a more cleaner look. So you can see specifically what are the stuff that you're capturing and only the modes that are related to that camera mode is displayed. So one of the things that I've noticed that had a little bit of changes is that when you go to live focus mode, uh, whenever you want to change, you know, previously you will have all the different live focus mode displayed here so you can choose. So now in order to change that, you need to click on this button here and then you will go into all the different uh, live focus mode. So there's one extra step for you when you want to change the live focus on the new One UI 2.0. So apart from that, other changes are mainly to the icons. You can see the, the font styles are different. Now all the fonts are capitalized uh, to make the overall UI feel much more modern and lightweight compared to the previous version of One UI. So another feature that is new in One UI 2.0 is the edge lighting feature. Uh, of course, the, the One UI 2.0 adds a couple of new variations of edge lighting that you can use. So the new updated edge lighting gives you more options to customize how your notification shows up and to access the option on edge lighting all you got to do is simply pull this thing down and look for edge lighting here. So once you are there you can 
pull into H lighting and you're brought into the H lighting mode. Once you're inside, you can see that there are multiple options to customize the H lighting. So all the way at the bottom here, you can choose when to show H lighting. So there's nothing new here. So if you click in here, you can see whether you can always have H lighting on uh, when the screen is on or when the screen is off. So this is also present in the previous version of One UI. So what is new is the design of the lighting style tab. So inside you can see that the entire option is now much more refined and you can choose between the tabs effect, colors, as well as advanced. Under effects, you can see some existing H lighting style. So Everything on the top here are the existing H lighting style and you will have a couple of new ones uh, down here. Some of the new H lighting styles, for example, you have heart. So when your notification comes out, you can see there are some hearts popping out. So that's quite nice. You will have fireworks. You will have eclipse. Or you can have echo. So not too much there. Echo is basically the sight of your phone lighting up. And lastly, you have Spotlight. So this is more subtle. You can see that at the top here, uh, it pulses uh, in the color that you've chosen. So if you go to color, you can choose all the different types of colors. I can choose multi-colors here or any color that I want to choose. Uh, I can also use app colors. So app color specifically allows you to configure what type of apps will have what color. So whenever the app has a notification, that specific color will appear as your H lighting. So let's just pick one color that's easy to see. So let's pick yellow. So you can see now it is pulsing yellow on top. Right? And advanced allows you to set the different transparency as well as the duration of the H lighting. If you want your, your H lighting to look more prominent, you can keep it at low. If you put it high, then it looks a little bit more uh, faint. And if you put transparency low, it will be more prominent. And if you want it to last even longer, you can just put the duration to long and the H lighting will last much longer in that case. So another update to the One UI 2.0 is the overall feel of how the animations are now so much smoother. So opening and closing applications are now much better compared to the older version of One UI. So if you take a look at here how I open some of the apps here, you can see the way that the app opens up. It's very uh, subtle, it's very smooth and soft. You know, it, it gives you that very nice feeling that it feels your screen. So that is a very nice experience. And animations have always been a big part of UI and UX. So you can see how such a minor changes to the animation can greatly affect the way the entire UI feels. So it makes the UI feel a lot snappier, a lot modern, and overall just so much nicer to use. So another new feature that Samsung added in One UI 2 is the new full screen gesture feature. In the previous version of One UI, Samsung added a gesture command for its navigation panel. So to access full screen gesture, simply go to settings, and then you can go to display, and then you can scroll all the way to the bottom here and you can see navigation bar. So if we click on navigation bar, you will have the typical button navigation. So here you will see the back button, the home button, as well as the multi-app button. So you can click full screen gesture and that is where uh, the new full screen gesture is living in. So if you go to more options, you will have two types. So the previous one UI only has this, which is swipe from bottom. So it mimics the three buttons that uh, Samsung has and you can just swipe to control the different commands. So with One UI 2.0, Samsung added even more to its gesture command and now has full screen gesture for users to choose. So this two here you can choose. So full screen gesture uh, for this swipe from sides and bottom leaves the entire navigation bar with just one single bar. And this gives it more iPhone 
like feel to using the entire phone. So in order to go back to the home page, all you got to do is swipe from this middle section here and it goes back. So it feels a lot like the iPhone gesture style. In order to bring up multi-app window, all you got to do is drag from the sides and hold and you will see the multi-app window turns on right you can select any of the apps here and to go back instead of pressing the button here because you can also use here to go to multi app screen but in order to go back uh, from a certain screen all you're going to do is swipe from the edge so you can either swipe from this edge or you can swipe from this edge so if for instance if you go into settings and you go fairly deep into the settings all the way in order to go back all you're going to do is just swipe 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 so that's how you can uh, use the new gesture commands to navigate the entire phone i think that makes the entire system a little bit simpler and basically it declutters the screen and gives it a more cleaner overall look and feel and since the dawn of smartphones people in general are getting more and more concerned that you know humans will be so distracted by our phones it creates a social problem for most of us so in the latest one ui 2.0 samsung starts taking digital well-being more seriously and has now included a dedicated option for consumers to set various parameters to help control their digital consumption so in order to access the digital well-being screen all you're going to do is go into settings and you will see there's a new setting here called digital well-being and parental control so you can click into here it basically shows you all the activities that you've done with your phone how long you have stayed on your phone uh, you know it even encourages you up here say put down your phone and do something you enjoy the top part here tells you how much you use certain apps so if you click into it it will tell you during what time of the day have you accessed certain apps right and it gives you a picture of you know how you actually consume your phone if you scroll a little bit to the bottom you will see your goals and here you will have app timers so clicking into here you can actually set timers uh, with, to use certain apps for example if you are always hooked on to youtube you can click a timer here so you can set a timer of how long you want to use certain apps and it, it will actually come off and you know tell you when to put your phone aside and do something else scrolling a little bit more down you will see here ways to disconnect so focus mode is something uh, that's very interesting for example if you're you know during your work time you can go through this entire setting to you know allow certain apps to only have notifications that come in and certain apps will not have notifications so you can focus on what you're doing so i think focus mode is very good uh, for people who actually work uh, you can also set me time to say hey you know i need some time for myself so i don't want any time of notification coming in so that is where you can uh, set some time for your me time or you can also do a customized focus mode so whatever you want to do what apps you can choose that has notification come in so that is where you can define that settings and lastly i just want to touch on some of the minor changes here and there you know that makes the entire device feel a little bit more you know much better as well as more than uh, compared to the previous version of one ui so the first one is dark mode of course dark mode has been present since the uh, previous one ui so you can simply click on dark mode here and you can see that the entire screen turns into dark mode right and you can see some of your apps your notification also turns uh black together with the dark mode theme so you can see a lot of things have changed uh, so when you turn into dark modes wallpapers will change widgets will change alarms and all of these things will change according to the dark mode setting uh, one of the other things that i want to highlight is the easier one hand mode uh, of course if you click into settings here you can go to advanced feature and you can scroll slightly down and you can see one handed mode clicking into one handed mode you can see that since now i'm in gesture mode uh, there's one way that i can go into one handed mode which is through a gesture so all you got to do to go into one handed mode is just swipe down from the center of the home screen here like this and it goes into one handed mode so double tap here and you'll go into full screen mode again so the difference is that from the previous one ui what you have to do is swipe from the edge here up 
diagonally. So that is very difficult because it's hit and miss and plus with curved screens and all, it's sometimes very difficult to press. So with the new implementation of one-handed mode, that makes it even more easier to access one-handed mode and I think that feature is genuinely genius. So that is it guys. This is a quick video to run down some of the cool things about the new One UI 2.0 under Android 10. So do you like any of these new features of One UI 2.0 and which of these features are your favorite? So let me know in the comment section down below and with that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.